I am just overwhelmed by the number of people who have come out to see this wonderful video. Uh, I'm Father Daniel. For those who may not know who I am, I am a Paulist, and I am, uh, I think, the pastor. I'm not too sure at times, but the pastor here at St. Paul's and the superior here in the community uh, for the Paulus Fathers. And today is a very, very special day for two reasons. One is the feast of the conversion of St. Paul, who is the patron of the Paulus Fathers. Father Hecker was on fire with the Holy Spirit, and he believed, like St. Paul, to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, and especially to those who have not yet heard it. So this is a wonderful evening in which we gather at, to view for the first time, this is the premiere of a video that was produced by and written by our own Father Tom Gibson. So this is a wonderful opportunity that we can come together as a community and to celebrate the conversion of St. Paul and the Paulist Fathers, but very important that we celebrate what we are going to see. I have to admit that when I was a novice with the Paulist Fathers way back in 78 or whatever, we got very little on Father Hecker. I'm not sure why in those days, but Father Hecker is an important figure in the life of the Paulist Fathers, but also an important figure in the life of the church in America. And so we should be very grateful to Father Tom for taking on this project and grateful to those who made this possible through their donations. So Father Tom, congratulations, and we look forward. Well, I am just so excited to see everyone here today. I think I've just been kind of putting one foot in front of the other, and uh, it's just, I can't believe it's already here. So um, thank you all so much for coming out. And, uh, uh, you know, as people have been asking me, when are we going to see it, when are we going to see it, when are we going to see it? And, uh, and then all of a sudden I just realized, wait a minute, the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul, what better day would there be than that? So um, thank there are uh, a million people to thank for this. Um, I figure I'll just do that later because I've been so busy doing other stuff, I don't want to you know, leave anyone out or anything. But uh, so I'll do like thank yous later, but I just want to say, but except to say thank you to all of you for coming out. Thank you for all the various ways you supported me um, in making this project. Um, and I, I think uh, I, I've been saying that, you know, and especially for me, one of the great things about this, one of the reasons I became a Paul is I just became so enamored with Father Hecker's story. It's just such a crazy, all over the place, not your typical Catholic story. And um, I, I feel like as Catholics, we tend to know a lot of American history, and we know a lot of our Catholic history, but we don't know a lot about our Catholic American history. And just to watch Father Hecker really just kind of wind through so many of the issues that we continue uh, to struggle with today as Catholics, this was just a real privilege. And uh, I think most of all, I'm grateful to the Holy Spirit for this because there was, this started off as just me kind of saying, oh yeah, all I need to do is throw a couple of, I've got all these pictures and I just need some headshots and some voiceovers and I'm done, you know. Um, and just at each stage of the way, this project has just exploded beyond any um, size I would have predicted. So uh, again, thank you all for your support. And uh, if, if, if you could... Um, not throw any eggs or vegetables if it's not to your liking, you know, just kind of uh, save it. But <laughs> seriously, uh, thank you all so much, and I hope you enjoy the film. You can't study the history of the Catholic Church in the United States without coming across Isaac Hacker. 
For a long time, many people asked whether it was possible to be Catholic and American. So where Hecker fits into this story, he was someone who thought about these issues long before and in a more intelligent way than a lot of people did. The American people are capable of great enthusiasm. It will produce the effects worthy of our faith and the Catholic Church. The idea that Hecker would say that Catholicism was better suited for a democratic country was a crazy idea in a lot of ways, because there was nothing democratic about Catholicism. Ralph Waldo Emerson was horrified to learn that Hecker had become a Roman Catholic. I mean, this was not only a desertion, this was putting on chains and being mentally and spiritually enslaved. Because they didn't understand, who is this guy? He doesn't fit our nice schema. Father Hecker is not sound in his theology. What we call our Americanism cannot be transferred into the church without heresy and schism. When he takes a trip up the Nile, you really do have a sense of his mystical transformation of his understanding of God's spirit at work in the great panoply of human history. These Arabs pray at all times and in whatever they do. These Muslims have a gift of vocal prayer. He's one of these God-intoxicated, god obsessed souls. Hecker is just as relevant today, and his experience is just as relevant today as it was back then. Well, let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> I'd like to introduce the panel. Matt McCoy, he was the voice of Isaac Hecker. <laughs> Tom Gibbons, and he produced it, wrote it, and directed. Yeah. And Megan Harrington, she's also a producer of the film. So I just want to, before we started, you talked a little bit about how this project came about. You had some photographs, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about what drew you to the project? I mean, I guess you were part of the Paul's fathers and then wanted to learn more about him? Yeah, I think what happened, well, I was always interested in Hecker because I remember reading Emerson as a kid, and uh, I had a very, um, what shall we say, long discernment period. Um, I, I, if you read the book of Jonah, that pretty much describes my discernment period to become a priest. Um, and I, you know, whenever I talk about the fact that I went to a Jesuit college and I did Jesuit volunteer corps, um, people always say, well, why did you become a Jesuit? And uh, somewhere along the line, I found out about the Paulist Fathers and Isaac Hecker. And, uh, and then I said, he spent time with Emerson, and I loved Emerson as, a, as someone, as a high schooler, and I, I read him a lot. And I've always seen Emerson uh, as someone who, for better or for worse, defines our American character in a lot of ways with his self-reliance and... Um, you know, uh, self-expression and all that kind of stuff. And so the fact that there was a Catholic community that intersected with Emerson just really intrigued me. And the more I got to know the Paulus Fathers, the more I just felt really at home. Um, but I think this project got started. One is when you, whenever you join the Paulus Fathers and you want to learn about Isaac Hecker, they give you this 400-page book and I just thought, well, wait, wait, we're the ones who make all the movies. Why, why don't we have a movie about, about Isaac Hecker? And uh, in 2008, as many of you may remember, was the 150th anniversary of the Paulist Fathers. And we had this big convocation in Washington, D.C., and we had this big mass to remember all of the Paulists who had, had who, you know, who had, died. It was kind of like, you know, the Oscars when they do the in memoriam. So they asked me, would you do like a little in memoriam video? And I had access to the Paulist photo archives. And if you think 150 years is the history of the Paulist Fathers, 150 years is also the history of photography. So it was literally like walking through, you know, and, I, and I've always loved Ken Burns films. So, I mean, I totally ate Ken Burns here. You know, I was just, <laughs> I tell people, I'm making a Ken Burns film. Like, what? <laughs> um, and, but I mean, it was just great, like seeing all these old photos. And then I said, you know, my, 
you know, and, and my naivete, I kind of did this piece and people seemed to like it. I just put the, some photos to music and I said, well, all you have to do is scan in some pictures of Isaac Hecker, get a couple of voiceovers and some talking heads and that's all you really need to do to make a film. Har, har, har. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, so when I was a deacon, uh, the summer before you get ordained a deacon, they usually give you a summer off, and that's usually if you want to do some sort of special project. So I said, you know, i kind of like to try a stab at an Isaac Hecker, you know, film. So I was in Boston. Uh, I was at the Paulus Center in Boston, and... Uh, I interviewed a lot of the people that, some of the interviews made it, some of the people I re-interviewed, and I just did the story of Isaac Hecker's conversion. Uh, the problem is I used some music that I didn't own, so I couldn't spread it out into the world. Uh, but people would watch it and say, well, what happened with the rest of his life? And I was, oh, well, well then I got ordained and was in Toronto for three years, and then, uh, Ironically, I just was in a situation where after my assignment in Toronto, I had kind of a gap, and I said I'd really love to finish the Hecker film because everybody asked me to. So Father Eric, God bless him. I mean, this is, you know, the fact that Father Eric had, you know, it's, it's you know, young priests are kind of like, you know, they, they're, they're kind of a little bit of a valuable commodity. They keep on wanting to put them in Paris. The, father, the fact that Father Eric let this, well, quasi-young priest uh, spend, you know, an X amount of time out of parish life and working on this um, was a real godsend. And then, uh, so I'm like, okay, I'll just do what I did before. And then someone said, oh, well, why don't you, oh, you know, why don't you try asking Martin Sheen? And I'm like, so I write a letter to Martin Sheen, and then, like, I get a phone call, and it's like, hi, this is Martin Sheen. And I'm like, Mr. President, you know. <laughs> and, then, um, and then I said, I know, what, I know the voice. I want Martin Sheen. Uh, then Bob Gunton, who, uh, for those of you who may know, was in Shawshank Redemption. So it's kind of like Shawshank Redemption and West Wing are, like, two of my favorite things to watch ever. You know, I'll stop whatever I'm doing and watch that. He was the warden in Shawshank Redemption. And for those who saw um, Law & Order SVU this past week, um, Bob Gunton was the super bad guy, you know, at the, um, so, uh, and so I'm talking on the phone with him, and Bob Gunton you, once studied to be a Paulist, and he was just, he really got into the role, so um, uh, I interviewed him, and then the only person I couldn't figure out, everybody else, if you haven't guessed, Isaac Hecker's kind of an enigmatic character, and then I said, the only person whom I don't know to cast is Isaac Hecker, which is ironic. And then uh, I was visiting LA about a year ago because I was recording Martin Sheen and I was talking to Deacon Danny and I was having coffee with him and I said, you know, who do we know? And he says, well, what about Matt McCoy? And I said, uh. <laughs> and here's the thing, here's the thing. I actually, when he said, oh, Matt McCoy was in West Wing, I actually remembered you from West Wing. I specifically remember the episode when you were talking about doing the Chesapeake Bay. And I was, I, I, that something of that had always resonated no, with me. That. Now, I know. I, and uh, the funny thing was, um, uh, but there was a couple of other people I was also thinking about. So I did what, it was an old animator's trick. What they do is I, I had people leave the room and I gave them a picture of Isaac Hecker, and then I played three voices. And I said, I can't be the person, I need other, I need some outside, and they all picked Matt. And I said, well, if that's good enough for them, then that's good enough for me. So, um, and you know, I was looking for someone who had uh, kind of an innocence, a strength, a sincerity. No, I'm serious, you know. You know, and that, that's, you know, the thing about Matt McCoy is, you know, as he always says, if you can fake sincerity, you can get so far. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think Matt should respond. Yeah, okay, here you go. <laughs> I, I, I have no response to any of that, by the way. But it's nice to know you were excited about Marty. You were excited about Bob. And then it ends right there. Then the excitement stops. But uh, no, it was a, a, a real honor uh, to be on board. And uh, uh, Tom and I spent, I flew to New York last year, and Tom and I spent seven hours together in a room, uh, 10 by 10 room. Yes. Um, 
And I realize now why Isaac Hecker was a seeker, because seven hours with you in a room, you're seeking an exit, is what you're seeking. <laughs> you're, you're seeking to get out of there. But um, we, we spent seven hours together there. We recorded here in Los Angeles twice. So um, it's wonderful to see the culmination of everything that we did. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's a real gift uh, to be on board. Uh, and I looked for Tom on all this. I didn't know much about Isaac Hecker. And in a sense, it was sort of like doing animation. Tom would say, OK, here's where he is in his life. And here's who he's speaking to. And uh, I mean, I, I relied solely on him. And so any pleasure that you derive from this tonight uh, comes from this man right here, because it really was a labor of love for him. And uh, it, as I say, and I, I keep saying, it, it's a real honor to, uh, to have worked with him and his vision and uh, to be a part of this. So, thank you. And thank you for, and he was beyond amazing. It's just anytime we needed anything, and I remember, I, I remember this in New York as we were finishing up. I said, yeah, I think we're good. It's like, we're gonna need to do some re-records. Oh. And, <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 we'll be fine. And then, hi, Matt, remember what you said. <laughs> Well, can you tell us now how Megan fits into the picture? Did you start the production on your own, and then did she come in later? Well, Megan is what I like to call adult supervision. And uh, Matt, Matt Donlin is also here tonight. And uh, where's Matt? Stand up, Matt. So Matt Donlin and Megan were what I call adult, because this, is, this you know, I was a web developer. I watched a lot of TV. You know, and I knew Photoshop really, real good, you know, but, you know, and I sort of could teach myself Final Cut Pro, which after a while I learned is not what the professionals use. So they were, um, and so it got to the point where I would say, there always seemed to be this thing where I said, this, this could be better, this could be better, but I definitely need people who know more than me. So um, through, and actually I have to, I have to point out, uh, um, Chris Donahue from Paul's Productions was immensely helpful in, uh, in, in hooking me up with Megan and helping to provide some resources for that. So thank you, Chris, for that as well. And thank, yeah, we'll do a little shout out to Paul's Productions on that. Um, and uh, what was great was just uh, having a great combination of someone who knew what they're doing, but also someone who really brought a strong faith component to this, you know, and someone who you know, I would forget to be the person to start the morning prayer. And she said, no, we haven't done our morning prayer yet. And I'm like sitting in my clerics looking like an idiot because, oh, yeah, that's right. I guess we should pray or, <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, I, I guess it's, it's, it's to kind of help me get it over the finish line and get it to the point where it needed to be. Because th this was always a project that I also knew I was cutting my teeth on. Um, so, so Megan was, was good, uh, good sharpened knives for that. <laughs> If I'm the adult supervision, then we're in big trouble. <laughs> oh. It was, again, Chris Donahue and Mary Beth Sprose um, had recommended me for this project and, and met with Father, and, and they said it's about Isaac Hecker, and I was like, oh, interesting, I'll have to Google him, because I, I wasn't aware of Isaac Hecker before the project, and I think the thing that um, Tom, Father Tom brought to the project that is that perseverance and the never giving up. And we came in at the very end. Andrew Klaycheck is here as well and helped with the editing towards the end. But it really was all Father and uh, just being able to come in at the last minute and help with things that, that, that would make it easier for him to finish the project. But uh, take no credit for, for anything that was on the screen besides just being able to be there uh, and support him through it. So grateful to be part of this uh, wonderful story and uh, a wonderful man who, who really taught us what it means to, to live your faith with courage. And I admired that about Father Hecker. A difficult time to say, no, I'm going to follow truth. And uh, I think it's a good message for us now and something that, that stays with me. So thank you, Father. Thank you. Well, I thought I would ask everyone on the panel, uh, when you were watching the film, when you were reading the script, when you were part of the project, what was the biggest surprise that you found about uh, Isaac Hecker? I mean, for me personally, it was that he wasn't Catholic when he was born, that he converted. Mm -hmm. And I, I wondered if any of you had any reaction during it when you said, wow, I can't believe this was, you know, the head of the Paulist Fathers. Well, well, for me, I, I, and, and we say this in the film as well, that it resonates as much today as it did back in, you know, 1888 when he died. Um, 
I thought there were some interesting things in the film, too, when he speaks about the Muslims and when he speaks about how deep their faith is. I mean, boy, you don't have to look too far today to, uh, to realize uh, <laughs> how far we haven't come, maybe, uh, in a way, you know, when, you, when, you, uh, when he speaks about those folks. Um, I, I really found it, d d doing it as disjointed as we did it, I really found it really came together beautifully. I, I really did. I, uh, it's, a, it's a great story. It, it really is. And you had always said that. You said that this... Uh, so I, I, I... Full marks, uh, because I feel like he really came through. And um, so I, I really... <laughs> it's the first time I've seen it tonight. And I really uh, enjoyed it. Uh, just what uh, what what you brought to him, and uh, so I, uh, I I think it really resonated with me. And seeing it for the first time, it was exciting. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. I, again, I think it is the climate for Catholicism during that time period. I was I wasn't as familiar with, and uh, this, that struck me the most was uh, his courage to to find truth and to follow it. So that's what I found most surprising. Can you tell everyone a little bit about the Paulus Productions? Because I don't know if they're aware that, you know, the Paulus Fathers have a production company. And maybe you can say, are all the uh, priests part of the production company? Or do you have to ask to be part of it? Well, if there's one, you know, as most of you know, I, I came to Los Angeles about six months ago. And the number one name I hear around town, continue to tenure, is Bud, Father Bud Kaiser. And, yeah, yeah. So I, I try to give him a little... I, I try to give him a little shout out in there. And it, it's just, he's just someone who basically, um, in his own way, he just saw a need and just took the ball and roll, roll, rolled with it during his time. And, uh, you know, it, it, the Insight series, which so many people know, uh, the movie Romero, which um, really holds up. Uh, so many different things. The story about Dorothy Day, uh, who I think is a, someone who's now, who, someone else, another New Yorker who's now up for sainthood. Um, and uh, how we've been doing, uh, I've been very privileged to be the, uh, I guess, associate producer, chaplain, guy who hangs out on Tuesdays at Paul's Productions. Um, if you really talk to Chris Donahue, um, and actually one person we need to, who's also working with Paul's Productions right now is Megan. Um, Megan, uh, what, the reason why Megan was, uh, I, Megan kind of came into my orbit is because Megan has been working on a fantastic project uh, called The Dating Project about how uh, people don't know how to date anymore. And that's been her labor of love and it's been really amazing um, you know, to watching that come alive and, and seeing uh, um, what, a va what a relevant topic that is. And just, um, so that's another film to watch out for that Paul's Productions is going to be doing soon. I don't want to say anything more because I know we got, got some other big stuff coming in, but not sure what I'm supposed to leave on the QT or anything, but. <laughs> um, I like the music in the film. Can you tell us a little bit about how you add the composition? One of the advantages of uh, one of the advantages of being Los Angeles uh, and where we are in Los Angeles is we're surrounded by all this talents, you know. And in many ways, I feel like when I came to Los Angeles, it was it was the perfect time because it kind of helped me get the film over the finish line to where it needed to be. Back in New York, however, we're in the middle of Broadway, and uh, the the person and the person who did the score. Uh, was, is someone who is probably going to be coming out to Hollywood soon, but does a lot of uh, compositions for Broadway musicals and was off touring with the international production of Shrek um, for the last year. So we were actually going back and forth via email while he was composing. Um, I think the one thing I wanted to keep in mind, which I think Adam, Adam Jones is his name, which I think Adam did absolutely beautifully, is I kept on saying to people, I want this to be an American film about a Catholic and not a Catholic film about an American. Because most Catholic films are, isn't he or she holy? Nah. <laughs> you know, and I felt like, you know, there's so many um, strings that Hecker's story touched that um, I was just uh, so, I kind of, 
gave Adam some ideas. And again, I, I was very honest. I said, look, I'm not gonna make a Ken Burns film. I'm looking to steal as much from Ken Burns as possible. And um, I think Adam did a really beautiful job of making that sound unique um, and then bringing that character as well. You did a great job. <laughs> uh, have you thought about taking it to any festivals? Um, it's right now we're going to be doing a showing at the Religious Ed Congress and uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, uh, actually maybe even next week, um, I'm talking with a group called Vision Video about doing digital distribution. Um, my goal is, and also DVD distribution so it can be downloaded. Uh, I would love to get it on Netflix or Hulu or something like that. Uh, my, my, my I already know I can get it on the religious channels, the UWTN, the Catholic TV. My hope has always been, could it get to PBS or some sort of secular channel somehow? Because I pur purposely made it so it could hopefully appeal to a secular audience. I wanted someone who was Presbyterian to sit down and say, wow, that was a really good story. I learned a lot. Like so. Some um, crossover appeal. Yeah. Well, I think so because you know it talks about his life before he became a priest. Mm -hmm. So there, you know, it is an interesting story. I think people might want to watch it. And also, you were talking about when you first became a Paul's father and you had to read the 400-page book. Now they might give them this. That was the hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Matt, as you said, this was the first time that you saw it. Yes. And so, were you very impressed with Tom <laughs> with what he did? <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, I'm very impressed with Tom. And, you know, the, I, looking at it again, and I'd like to see it again, there really is a simplicity to the story. Uh, you know, there really is. I mean, he's just uh, working in the community. He's a walker. He's a seeker. I mean, in anything that you do, too, I mean, I'm a walker. I think I'm a little bit of a seeker, you know. So I, I found so many things that resonated in him that I, I think resonate in me, too. So I... Um, but, you know, just out there doing community outreach, and um, I, I, just, I, I just think it resonates as much today as it did back uh, in, the, uh, in the 19th century. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I look forward to taking a peek at it again, yeah. What, what kind of preparation do you do for a voiceover part? <laughs> this won't take long. Um, <laughs> I, I, my preparation, as I said earlier, all relied on Tom. I didn't, I didn't know much about this gentleman. I had, I had read about him before I flew to New York to meet Tom for the first time, because we had not met before either. So um, I, I solely relied on him. And honestly, it was seven hours together, and we, we went through his whole life, I think, in that seven hours, because you didn't quite know what you were going to need at that point. But... Uh, we would take time uh, when he went through the, uh, uh, the dark part of his soul, as they speak about, and uh, uh, Tom would say, here's where he is now, and, and here's where he's feeling, and I, I, I solely relied on Tom for, uh, for every bit of direction and uh, every bit of guidance, so I put my faith in the right guy. Mm -hmm. I, th I think we should tell everyone about the fundraising effort that you have going right now. I think it's, uh, it's still open, correct? Yes. Um, uh, you know, I had a little thing up here, but I had a little piece of paper. Um, I'm doing a, a, something called through generosity.com just to help, um, one, kind of take it in terms of some of the distribution costs that may be coming up in the future, but also, two, because the Paulists did uh, contribute to the film, invest very heavily in the film. I'm also looking to see what we can do to kind of help replenish those media film, uh, funds so that we can, uh, one, so that we can recoup, you know, a little bit, and then, but also uh, invest for uh, Isaac Hecker to The Vatican Strikes Back. I don't know. Um, <laughs> or whatever, you know, whatever the next project is, you know, and, and all of our... Um, you know, we, I think one of our, our great legacies from the Paul's Fathers is our media ministry and is um, giving the word a voice. Um, so any support you can give to this um, would be very, very much appreciated. This helps us, um, you know, hire the people we need to hire who can maybe get it on PBS or maybe get it on some other secular TV channel so that other people can uh, hear a story. Again, because we live in a very difficult time in that, it's, it's, it's difficult, as many of us know, to talk about faith in the secular setting. 
You know, it, it's, it's you either super into religion or you think it's all BS, unfortunately. And so I think one of the great things about Hecker's story is he really invites people in to have a conversation um, on people's home turf in a way that makes them feel comfortable. And, and I think uh, the more we can get his story out there, hopefully the more we'll be able to, you know, especially as we live through this you know, red state, blue state divide or whatever. Um, I think Isaac Hecker is like a really nice touch tone for a lot of different people to get together and start having conversations. So um, we can start coming together not only more as Catholics, but as Catholic Americans as, an Ameri as well as Americans. I actually um, also want to say I was really struck by what happened with St. Patrick's Cathedral when he the crowd was uh, aggressive and yep. he really took control. Well, that, was, that wasn't Isaac. That was, um, if you've ever seen the movie Gangs of New York, it's basically, you know, that was from Gangs of New York. However, I love, this is one of my favorite pieces of film trivia, is uh, uh, in the Godfather baptism scene, for those of you, like, do you reject... Do you reject sin? Yes, bam, 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 bam. That was filmed at Old St. Patrick's Cathedral, the same church where Isaac Hecker was baptized. So just a neat little, uh, there's all these like neat little elements. And now I think when, like when I thought, there was just all these like great little things of elements that Central Park was started the same year that the Paulist Fathers began. And they, the church was right next door. Um, it's, you know, I, I've called, before, Isaac Hecker is like the Forrest Gump of the 1800s, because he was just in all these different places. And uh, I think it was Teresa Keeney who said, he's the most famous person you've never heard of. Um, <laughs> right, right. And then what you said in the film about he had the choice between being with his family that was successful mm -hmm. or going into the priesthood and he chose otherwise. Yep. So that was interesting. Mm -hmm. What about the website so that they um, can, do you have a website where they can go and do it? Yeah, so if you go to hackerfilm.com, very simple, hackerfilm.com, and then just press support. And then, uh, so if you want to, but if you also, uh, I think there's also someone with an iPad and a, if you want to make a credit card donation. Oh, Nora's got it right down, okay, down there. Nora's got it right down there. And they can get a D DVD? And, they, and yeah, so it, it, there's like different levels of giving and they can get a DVD once the DVDs will be made. Is there a question from the audience? We have and you can a... use the microphone up there if anybody has any questions. But why is Jesus not mentioned in this film? Why is Jesus not mentioned in the film? Oh, that's, a, that's an interesting point. One of Hecker's main spirituality, I think there was kind of like two thoughts behind that. One of Hecker's main spiritualities was the Holy Spirit. Um, and so there was like a, a, an intention to, but it's funny, it's, I'm kind of chuckling because I remember we had like a discussion about this in the editing room. Um, I think one is he, uh, because the, uh, Hecker had such a strong devotion to the Holy Spirit that more of his writings were about the Holy Spirit and I thought it might be better to highlight that. And we were hoping that like Hecker's devotion to Catholicism would be implied with that. 